Good morning, good morning everybody. Wow, this is, <coughs> this is an unusual time, uh, but I have to obey my father's will. I was instructed this morning, um, I got a dream and um, I thought I would take my time to explore the dream properly and then um, put down the scriptures and then we we'll talk about it maybe later today or in the evening or even when I get to London tomorrow uh, we will talk about that but he says my father don't want that he wants me to discuss the dream with you yeah he wants me to discuss the dream with you this morning before going to church and I have only 45 minutes um, to get ready not even up to 45 minutes my alarm will show up now by um 7 a.m now it's 6 25 a.m nigeria time um or african or west african time um i just want to it's not even west africa because ghana is different from our time anyway let me just say nigerian time is 6 25 a.m and this particular message is not a message that we will ignore it's not something we will just um you know, push aside. This is a very, very terrifying message. But the good thing is that you and I, the message is not going to affect us negatively. It's going to uh, build us um, strongly. It's going to make us to stay on the path that we are in already. God is reminding us, ourselves, that there is a judgment and um, um who says, okay, I think somebody wants to connect here. Who is that person? Well, let me do this ad. Want me to add him? Okay, let's see who that person is. Invite. Okay. Um, okay, this person wants to make a double connection with us. Uh, Zubis, uh, his name is uh, Zubis, yeah? Okay, uh, Zubis, you're welcome. Uh, happiness, Simon, you're welcome. David, uh, Zubis, uh, Bikela, just Jasper, you're welcome. Um, Bikela, who is this? Is that Jasper that I know? Uh, Evangelist Shalom colleague, Chisum Mbago, and so on. So, those that are coming right now, please, you can show yourself up. But we don't have time anyway for recognition of people. Now, I just wanted to just um, tell you what God has just said, what He has shown us this moment. Um, I'm taking you straight to the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 20. Then I will um, take you exactly to where God wants us to go. Because in that Revelation chapter 20 is where we are going to read this moment. Yeah? Before I go through this, just, let's just bow down our heads. Father, we thank you for the revelation. Thank you for forgiving of our sins. Thank you for cleansing that was made 2017 years ago. Thank you for the propitiation of sin by that same cross of Calvary. Thank you for blotting out every transgressor besetting your children. Thank you for wiping out all the iniquities. The abominable acts. Thank you for nailing them on the cross and setting us free from them. Thank you for letting that chastisement happen on your only son, your only begotten son, and giving us a chance to live. Thank you for the burden. Thank you for the burden, O oh Lord. Thank you for the burden that you have taken away from us. Thank you, for we know that the great white throne is approaching. We are about to face the great white throne, Father, and I know, and I know that your children will be count, counted among those that will rejoice on the last day. Each and every one watching me right now before going to church this morning, I want them to know that you love us. Just, Father, reveal and manifest your love in us. Father, let your mercy continue to abound in every one of us in the name of Jesus. Let your grace abound. Let your grace abound. Father, thank you as you have given me this dream this night. 
or early this morning and I obeyed you. You say I should tell my people before I will go to church. Father, I have hearkened to your voice. Then give me utterance. You know, this is a great white throne we're talking about. It says, it's only John the Beloved can explain this great white throne better. But if I trust in you, the one that you sent to me, Holy Spirit, who is my comforter, my teacher, my helper, he will help me. So therefore, Lord, allow me, permit me to step aside. Let the Holy Spirit step in and teach your people. For I know nothing about it. You know that I'm not qualified to teach this. But because you have asked me to go, Father, speak through me because I have no knowledge of it. Just speak through me. Talk to your children through my voice. Thank you for the white throne who is there sitting there. He is the great king, the king of all kings. Thank you for giving us opportunity to reign with him for a thousand years, watching that sit and bound for a thousand years. Thank you for being among those that are resurrected and those that are living that will join in that new Jerusalem. My God, this is a wake-up call. I thank you for this revelation. Thank you for this dream, my Father. Because every time you give a dream, there is a purpose for the dream. It's either for the person personally or for the world to hear it. Father, this one is for the world to hear because we don't, we don't want anybody to perish. We don't want anybody to be cast into the lake of fire. My God, I am asking you, let your mercy abound on everyone that I see this video. And every church that are working in error, my God, I'm seeking for your mercy. Every servant of God, none of them will miss this great 1,000 years of existing with Jesus Christ in this new Jerusalem, my God. <laughs> Father, none of your servants, none of your worshippers, none of your praisers, everyone that are tabernacled in your household, my God, none of them will miss this heaven. None of them will miss this thousand years of reading with Christ Jesus. And when we bind this devil and his agents for a thousand years. My God, you, what you have shown me is so great and mighty. I'm begging you, Lord, to come and take place now. Remove me from this podium and take place and speak to your children in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you for a great night and a great revelation. Thank you for your love for us. It's only those that you love, you chastise. And those that you love, you reveal your arms. Thank you, my Father, for revealing yourself to us in the name of Jesus. God bless each and every one of you that are coming now. I am so, I'm so glad to have you here. I didn't even know anybody would be around because this is just a time for anybody waking up from the church. We're supposed to be preparing ourselves. And please, everyone watching me, if your time is a time for church, once we finish, please don't miss your church service, okay? And when you get to church service, all you need to do is only one simple prayer. See, lay at the altar. Say, Father, I have seen your white throne judgment. I have seen it. I won't partake in the negative part of it. Just ask God to help you because nobody, I don't want any of us to miss this. For God to bring this to my attention right now, and he wants me, he's, talk, he's not talking to you only, he's talking to me myself. There will be judgment of every work that we have done. Let me just go into it so that we don't waste more time because 7 o'clock I must let you go. I need to go and get myself ready for church, yeah? I haven't even brushed my teeth. I've not done anything. I just got the dream. As I got it in the dream, I just woke up from my bed, wear my robe, and then simply, simply just say, let me talk to you before I, I hit the shower. Now, listen to me. From the first book, uh, from the uh, 20, chapter 20 of the um, book of Revelation, if you have your Bible, go there. Where he showed me was verse 10, yeah? The great white throne. But I don't want to just start from verse 10 i mean verse 11 sorry it, it doesn't you it will, it will not grab it so permit me to read then when i get down to 11 and do some explanation okay let me start from verse 1 there it says then i saw i saw an angel coming down from heaven having the oh please feel free to invite people oh, please please feel free to do so so that they may also join us then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old. I don't know, maybe you would prefer me to read this in a new, new living translation because, you know, this one is New King James. It's mild down, but there's even better language. I mean, easier language to understand. Let's, let's read it on a new living translation, okay? NLT. Now, listen, not, not, um, 
new international version niv not that one that one is not complete the bible is not complete there are so many things they removed there but new living translation is complete yeah so then i saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit and a heavy chain in his hand verse 2 he seized the dragon that old serpent who is the devil satan and bound him in chains for a thousand years this thousand years that this setter will be bound in chain was a thousand years that you and I are going to exist in the new Jerusalem with Jesus Christ, our King. The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked up. So Satan could not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years were finished. This dragon, this old serpent, Satan, demon, diablo, devil, whatever you call him, father of all lies. See, he's going to be cast into that very that very place. That They will lock him in a pit somewhere, chain him, and put a seal on that place. So nobody will, nobody will tamper even to bring him because it's pa pa father himself that will put him there. And while he's there, he's going to be there for 1,000 years. I mean, that 1,000 years, he's not going to have the opportunity to come out and deceive you and I again. Nothing that he goes to and fro, like he said in the book of Job, when they say Job, the man that showed him, they say, Where do you come from? He said, I'm going to and fro. See, he will not have the opportunity to go up and down again. He will not have the opportunity to go to and fro again. We are going to stay with Jesus Christ in the new Jerusalem. But let me finish so that you understand. Not everybody will stay in that new Jerusalem with Jesus Christ. You will see what I'm uh, just listening to what I'm reading here. Yeah? The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he that, which he then shot and the locked so Satan could not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years we are finished. Afterward, he must be released a little while. Satan will then be released a little while again. And then look at him now, how he will fight back when he got released. Yeah. Then I saw thrones and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge. I saw thrones. People sitting on them has been given authority to, to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus Christ. You see why I tell you what I tell you sometimes. It's good for you to understand. So I don't think I'm saying it because uh, it's about bluff. If you are a true apostle of God, don't sit on a comfort zone. Because if you are apostle, you don't sit in a comfort zone. I'm talking to those that bear an apostles everywhere on Facebook, calling themselves reverend and all these things, say that you're a great man of God or evangelist everywhere. The people that bear this name are people that bear the mark of Christ. They are boarding bearer and they are people that do what? That carry this cross we are talking about. You know, cross is carrying problem, boarding. It's, it's a solo thing. It's a, it's a heavy war. You are a war, warhead. That's what it is. The people that are bearing all this name, they just sat down there thinking you're going to just stay very well, dying beautiful, die beautifully with your wife and your eight or ten children. You know, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, it doesn't work like that. People like us, me, I am particular, I'm saying it again, hear me very well. I am not going to die quietly in my house. The only thing that will stop this apostolic death for me is when Jesus Christ is come, if Jesus Christ comes earlier. And then I rapture with him. But apart from that, listen, this is what happened to those that are, that, are, that would be in that place in heaven. Listen. Then I saw thrones, and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge. Yeah, And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus. For, 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 for proclaiming the word of God. Do you hear that? We will be beheaded. Great apostles are dying in a rugged way. They don't die, in, in, you know, very, oh, I'm so sick. Come on, okay now. In 95 years, I'm in bed, and then you just say, mm, why my wife, everybody, I love you all, and you're gone. No, no, no. We are evangelists. We die at the battlefield. We die at the battlefield. Apostles, all of you, we have to die at the battlefield. If you are making it too comfortable, trust me, you will not you will have a rugged ending. Eternity will be so rugged. Let us remove comfortability right now and pursue this thing because heaven is not an easy place to go. When God is showing us this kind of thing, it means that we should react. We should react. Hey, seriously. Some people are asking, they want to, okay, adding you. Some people want to um, 
I joined the, I did this thing. Okay, Henry, just in your welcome. So all, all of you that are coming, you're welcome. So he say, he say, then he continued from that same verse 4. He said, they have not worshipped the beast or his status. People that have not worshipped the beast or the, his status, we don't worship that. And when they say worshipping the beast, do you really understand what we're talking about? People that doesn't want, oh my God, look at my great man of God. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Glad to have you. I mean, see, uh, people that want, you wouldn't, let me read it from the beginning again. Then I saw thrones, and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus and proclaiming the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his statue. They worshipping the beast or his statue. People that does not listen, you don't worship man. Money. You don't worship material things. You see all this mundanity, vanities, and so on. When you don't worship those things, then you are talking about this place. This place is going to be for you. And if you put your head in the field, in the wilderness there, winning souls, if you got beheaded, look at that place is for you. Look at it. You don't want to die on top of a woman where you are sleeping around with people. <clears throat> you don't want to die where you are robbing people, where you are cheating people. You don't want to die where you are selling drugs. Or where you are prostituting. This is not a place to die. A place to die is in the field, in the wilderness where you are dragging souls to heaven. That's a place to die. So I am waiting on my day of beheading, on my day of rapture. These are the only two things. I have no other option. So if you think I'm having another option, that is no, no, no. I'm following exactly how the apostle died. And if you truly want to be an apostle, be an apostle indeed, not by title. I have seen so many titles, but they don't even leave one quarter of the what is one quarter. They don't even leave an inch of uh, of the expectation of being an apostle. They are not. You want to be an apostle, be an apostle so that you may be able to join me on the day they, when this white throne that God showed me in this dream, when God will appear on this white throne, your name will be in the book of life. Let me continue. In verse 5, he said, this is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years have ended. See, this very word he was talking about now, they had not worshipped the beast or his statues, nor accepted his mark on their foreheads or their or their hands. Yeah? When you are, we are still on that verse 4. When you, when you have not worshipped the beast, you have not that, taken that 666 or 666 or any form of insertion of this beast mark anywhere because of new world order or maybe you want to join this obama and to go on and go their their agenda to to globalize the earth and then give them a mark that if you don't have that mark you will not pass in Heathrow airport neither will you pass in skipper airport holland you will not even pass in, in john f kennedy airport or no lagos airport or wherever you call it or johannesburg or, or melbourne see those marks you cannot take it. If you take this mark, the white throne judgment will stand against you. And being very fair to you and honest, it is better that they kill you than you to take that mark. If you want to be an apostle, please, sir, please, ma, don't join the new world order. That Obama agenda was total evil. Don't even go in there. There are so many people that are behind the agenda, but this is why I'm giving you an example. He's the man who has really pushed it so far, and he has succeeded in bringing in that, and it's working right now. The beast numbers are being given in America. Some places they are using it to shop now. They are using it to move. It is already in, 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 in action. People are living in it, but you don't want to be part of it. Be an apostle so you'll be beheaded at the right place. If you're not beheaded, then you know what will happen? You rapture. These are the only two ways. No, no, no. I'm saying it again. You better go a place where you will do the work. If you are beheaded there, it's all good. Or you stay holy in that your working place and doing it until rapture come and takes you out of there. That's my two ways. I have no other way to die. Okay, then after, these are the first ones. Say, this is the first resurrection. That's when God will resurrect these people and then he will resurrect only those that have been beheaded. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And those that have not bowed to Baal, to all this demonic world, and those that have not taken that mark of beast, and those that have not fallen into the world, the new world order, these ones are going to be resurrected. But those that did not, that fall into that, that took the chip, that took all these diseases and everything, living like animal in the world, they will not resurrect for this 1,000. They will still be in the grave until the second resurrection. resurrection. 
The second resurrection is when the body, every living thing, dead, alive, all of them will come out and then the judgment will pass and then those that will go to lake of fire will go to lake of fire. Obviously, those ones that did not even resurrect in the first resurrection, they are going to hell, of course. That's why they are still there. If not, we will also be, if we are dead before this time comes, yeah, then we will also, all of us that are with Christ Jesus, that have not taken that beast mark and living a rightful life, righteous life, we, they will pick us into the new Jerusalem. That's where we will reign for 1,000 years when this dragon, the old serpent that the Bible is talking about here, yeah, shall be bound shall be bound for a thousand years put a sea nobody will open him up and he will not go to the same nations again according to the bible revelation chapter 20 that we are reading here now okay i take you to verse 6 he said blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection did you hear that blessed and holy are those who share in the first please my brothers and my sisters i am begging you from the bottom of my heart if you if you are in the field stay correct please because if you die in that field, you will be among those that will be resurrected in the first resurrection. You will be among those that will be resurrected in the first resurrection. Resurrection. I am not making up stories. I'm telling you what the revelation said. This is a book written by John the Beloved who saw heaven clearly. Yeah? Let me just tell you something. You need to understand this. He said, for them, the second death holds no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and we reign with him a thousand years. For us, if we happen to die before them, I know we still have a lot of work to do, so rapture is coming very soon anyway. When this rapture comes, we will all go. Then even if it happened that we have been beheaded because of gospel, because of testimony of Jesus, if we have been beheaded, then there is nothing to fear or worry about because we will be resurrected with those that are that have not bow to this demonic world. And we will be in Jerus New Jerusalem for a thousand years and we will reign with Christ. Now, the defeat of Satan will come. When, um, verse 7, when the thousand years come to an end, Satan will be let out of his prison. He will be let out of his prison. Yeah, after 1,000 years, and hear him fight, he will go out to deceive the nations called Gog and Magog in every corner of the earth. He will gather them together for battle, a mighty army as numberless as sand along the seashore. Devil will be released after that 1,000 years. And you know when you are released from that kind of wounded place, eh, your eyes will be red, you will be so angry, full of rage, and you know, you will be fortified with, 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 eh, with this kind of furiosity. And you see devil, he will gather people. They say that their army was uncountless. I'm talking about multitude of army to go and fight in a place called Gog and Magog. You know, he will come and surround even that new Jerusalem for battle. Listen, he gathered all these people and come to surround New Jerusalem for battle. And verse 9 says, And I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people and the beloved city. Who is the beloved city? The New Jerusalem. The, the devil was released after 1,000 years. He gathered, he gathered all kind of army and surrounded the city, that new city, just to attack us. Hey, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet Nahum was manifested instantly. Listen to what happened. Listen to them. He said, he said um, um, and I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people with the beloved city. But fire, but fire from heaven came down on the attack, attack, attacking armies and consumed them all. This one is not about you going to pick up a weapon. No? We are talking about city of God. So who is the watch, watchman? God. Who is the protector of the city? God. Who is the security man of the city? God. Who is the gate man? God. Who is everything? God. Who is the guide? God. Who is the city? The God. Everything in that 1,000 years that we're going to read that place is in the hand of God. It's a city that is just dropped down from heaven to, to earth. New Jerusalem. Just it, the way heaven looks like, they brought it. You see the garden of it, that garden, so beautiful garden, like the, in the original garden of Eden. You see how beautiful the place is. Just don't worry, we are going to get there. Now I might be talking, it might not make sense to you until where we get there, but don't miss it because if you miss it, it will be a great, a gracious thing for you. 
and I pray nobody is here. You, all of you that have seen this video or watching me, you will never miss this great, great day that are coming. Okay, verse 10 says, Then the devil who had deceived them, who had deceived those thousand people that did people that take this mark of beast and everything, all these Jezebelian, Jezebelian daughters, Atelia daughter, that are walking around now, those ones that are coming there to come and fight us in the New Jerusalem. The Bible said, Then the devil who had deceived those people, was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophets. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. That one doesn't sound good. Every Facebook prophet, are you hearing that? Please find, find a way to share this message. It's not a message you listen to alone because all the false prophets need to hear this. If there's no message to go viral, this one needs to go viral, please. So that the false prophets will know that there's no time for hanky-panky anymore, no time for that useless game anymore. This is time for us to get real. We have to be serious with our mandates. We have to be serious with our race. Stop prophesying or saying things that God did not say. He says that the false prophets will be thrown into that lake of fire with the devil. Let me read that again so that you don't think it's a story. He said, then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. The beast and false prophet and the Satan, the devil himself, they will be thrown into that lake of fire. Yeah? Okay. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Day and night forever and ever. Then the final judgment comes when I when God showed me about the white throne. I think network is fluctuating here now. Okay, let wait. I hope this network is not gonna mess us up now. Hold on. Can you hear me? Oh, God help us. We don't want any network issue here now. Um, we're having a little bit of um, network here, network problem. Can, I, can anybody, can you hear me, please? If you can hear me, just tell me something. Let me know if it's okay now. We're having a network challenge. I need somebody to talk to me, please. Somebody just tell me something. Let me know if, if everything is okay. Because, um, okay, if anybody can hear me, just say something, please. Maybe I, I think it's, it's better. Yes, now we can. Okay, I think it's better now. Okay, thank you so much for reminding me. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, <clears throat> I take you to the final judgment where he showed me tonight. It starts from verse 11. That's exactly where he showed me that dream that made me to make this call this morning. He says in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and the one sitting on it, the earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw a great white throne, and the one sitting on it, the earth. So, you know, there's so much light that comes from there. That place, people could, the, as the enemies could not hide. The, the light busted everybody where they are, and transparency come up. God, I need a better network. This is fluctuating seriously. This is not a message that network will mess up. This is a message that needs to be heard clearly. <sighs> Lord, do something about this network, please, huh? Do something about this network. We need to we need to get this message. Is, is it better now? Can you hear me now? I can see myself like a kind of jumping, you know. Um it's like the network is fluctuating that I'm yeah, it is. I feel it as I even see it here. Yeah. It's fluctuating. Do you mind do you mind give me one second? Let me off the router and reboot it back. Is that would that be okay for you? Let me let me put it on another network and then reboot it because we have to round up soon. We are going to get ourselves ready for church very soon. Hmm. Okay. 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 Let me see if I can be able to get um. Uh, 
um, este, este, este shaking, I can see that. Let me put the other router, let me put the router off and then on again. Please just bear with me. Let me just reboot the router and then we will just um, um, continue and see how it goes. Because I Can anybody hear me now? If you can hear me, let me know because I mean we're having a very terrible uh, network this morning. I think it's better now. Um, I'm rebooting the router while I'm using the the the, the uh, um, it is a lot on my phone to browse. Let's see now if um. If we can move on before it reboots, yeah, it's better now. Okay. Hmm. Thank you so much, Princess Owa, uh, Joy, Yaros, and so on, and other people that have shared this video. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, and God will bless you for that because this video is worthy to be shared. Okay, now. Let's see how long this will take to reboot. I think we're getting a better network now, I believe. Yes. Yes, I think we have a better network now. Thank God for that. Okay. Please, now, let's round this up now before we go and take our bath for shower. I saw the dead. Okay. I'm reading now from verse 11 again, and I saw a great white throne. That's where God showed me the dream, yeah? And the one sitting on it, the earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. When this judgment time comes, there's no way to hide. Everybody must face it. And verse 12, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened in including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books, according to what you have done as recorded in the book. You see, well, let me explain this. If you have done so much evil and you repent from it, they are forgotten. The Bible says, oh, things are, are passed away and all things become new. Don't think that they will remind you of your past prostitution or your past your drug lean or whatever. No, no, no. If you are a new creature, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are becoming uh, new. You can't, you can't, they can't remind you. Heaven will not remind you of those ones. But where the problem is, if you don't repent, all your works will be appeared on that day. They will, the, the throne, there is the judgment. When the book of life appears, the book of works appear, they will show you all you have done. And then if your name is not in the book of life, there's no option. There's no repentance in heaven. In that gate, upon that white throne, you can't come there to say, I, I'm repenting. Okay, please, let me just repent now. Forgive me. I didn't know. I want to repent now. They will tell you, yes, you know, evangelist was there shouting. How many followers do I have here? Go to my other page. It's about 8,000 followers. You come to this very um, uh, on my Facebook. It's about 4, so minimum 10,000 people have access to hear my voice on Facebook. Very soon we will start our crusade worldwide. So I'm I'm hoping to win millions of souls before Jesus comes. So all those millions that are going to hear my voice, or that have heard my voice, my voice. How can you say you did not know? Obviously, you know that hell and heaven is real. 
But it's just that you want to believe in the world, the new world, or that doing their things, looking psychedelic, you know, dressing properly, having your chip on your forehead. They come at the airport, they just see, oh, Sabina or Sabrina or Sayena. You know, you just pass pretty girl. You know, you have your CCC mark on your forehead. Airport will open for you. No passport, no bank card, nothing. You go to bank, they just see the chip on your forehead. Whatever. You want to drive Bentley car, they will transfer the money to the Bentley Continental Shop in London, and you just drive the car and walk away. Those life could be very sweet and nice, but let me tell you, the way, the end of it, the end thereof, the end thereof is devastating. You can enjoy as much as you want right now, but make sure that you are preparing for the end thereof. The Bible says, end thereof is destruction. But you can take your cross now Carry your cross and follow Jesus Christ as he said that if you want to make heaven, he says, do what? Forsake your mother, father, children, money, business, everything, career, calling, all the, everything that you have, forsake it and carry your cross and follow me. Carrying cross to follow Jesus Christ takes a lot of great burden, a great burden. You have to be a burden bearer, both to poor, needy, everyone. You have to, even those that wound you, you have to forgive them. That's part of burden. You can't carry any grudges. You can't carry any luggages because this thing cannot enter the kingdom of God. You purify yourself completely. Yes, we have to round up now. My alarm for church service is here already. So we have to round up before I take my bath here. Yeah. Okay, now listen to the next verse. Where are we? Where are we? We are in verse 11, right? Yes, verse 11. Now I saw the day, verse 12. Sorry, we have written verse, verse 12. Let me, let me read it again. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened. Books were opened. That's the book of your works and book of life. Yeah. And the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done. Are you hearing me? As recorded in the book of life. Verse 13. The sea gave up its death, and death and the grave gave up their dead. Do you see that? Death is a spirit. Death is a personality. Are you hearing me? This is the way people say, say, the sea gave up its death. The sea vomited the death that is holding. Yeah? And the dead, the death and the grave gave up their dead. Death and grave. This is a personality. Deity is another God of his own. Evil God with a small letter G that is called death. That is what is holding people. That is what is going about killing people. The God has given them power to kill people. I will give you the verse when I go next time. I'm going to go online. I will bring down the verse and then I detail it for you. This thing called death is a spirit and is moving about. That's why when you apply the blood of Jesus at your doorpost, when that death comes, it will pass over you. It's still the same blood. We're talking about blood of Jesus, not the blood of lamb or goat or, or cow, no, or, or, or sheep. No, we're talking about blood jesus christ when you apply it on you apply it on your doorpost whether you are in a fl plane flight and the flight is about to crash that because you are inside the flight it will not crash because there's a seal mark of ownership upon you that mark of ownership can only be marked with blood blood of jesus that never loses its efficacy and the authority behind the blood is unattainable nobody can compare with that blood it is thicker, greater, mightier than the blood of Eber. So anytime you apply it, it works perfectly for you. The sea gave up its death, dead, and the death, the death and the grave. The sea gave up his dead, D-E-A-D, yeah? And then the death, D-E-A-T-H, the death and the grave, listen to it, gave up their dead, D-E-A-D. Death is his spirit. Grave is a spirit. See, both of them gave up, gave up. Somebody, these two spirits, they will give up everything they have taken from us. Okay, and he say, and he said, then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. Death and grave. You see, those two spirits. You see now, they are personality. They are just like Satan is, yeah? Death and the grave will be what? Thrown into the lake of fire. I don't know if this is making sense to you guys. I have to quickly rush it out. And anyone 
whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. That's where I'm going to stop because I'm going to take my bath now and go to church. If you have, if you have missed this program, it's a very short uh, message, very short. God gave me, let me give you the headline again. God gave me a dream this early this morning around 5 a.m. or 4 something. Yeah, I got, I heard it clearly. You're talking about white throne. White throne, that's what I just detailed to you. You can see exactly about white throne in uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. But I want you to read from verse 1 to the end of it. It's only 15 verses, please. It's not much. 1 to 15, so that you grasp the depth of the discussion this morning. I cannot afford to see you fail. I cannot afford to see you go to hell. I cannot afford to see you vanish or disappear on earth without a tangible record. I cannot afford to see you living here, dying like a person who has no leg, like that person that will not have any future, or you can't keep any, you can't leave any legacy like Papi Dagosa left a legacy. You know, you can't die or rob robber them, and so on. Uh, Catherine Kuman and all these great generals, them like uh, like uh, Smith Regosworth, uh, you know, people that are that, that, that really died with legacy i want you to die with legacy please don't just die like a chicken like that and be swallowed by one useless belly no please don't let that happen i want you to go through this please i can't speak more now because we don't go to church but i've already given the details i don't know if it's 30 minutes or 20 something minutes that we have spent here and that's enough for this morning because it's not my intention to wake anybody up i just heard the voice god say the dream is not for me it's not for me alone let me put it that way it's for all of us so i'm not gonna because some dream comes you go and begin to make your repentance alone God is not talking to you that you are you are need to repent and I'm not new. No, we all need to repent. But he's just saying that it's not for me alone. It needs to be shared everybody. Some dreams are for me. Some dreams are for you. Some dreams are for everybody. This one are for everybody. The great white throne. We have to forsake every evil ways. We have to turn away from every evil ways. We have to forsake every fornicating spirit, all those things that are that, that, that are raging the whole earth today we turn away from it, turn away from all those mark of 66, we will not enter the kingdom of God with it, you have, I've detailed you about New Jerusalem, we are going to reign in that New Jerusalem for 1,000 years and that 1,000 years the Satan will be bound with his agents in that hole, him personally will be bound in that hole, that pit where Jesus Christ will put him there, he will be there for 1,000 years and there will be a seal, a seal that this is no touching, don't touch it is the property of god now one hundred ten one thousand years he will be there and then after one thousand years he will be released for a while and out of that release he will from that release he will get so angry satan will get so i'm just trying to detail you revelation chapter 20 and i'm making a pro i'm just brushing it through again i've read it one one after the other but i'm gonna brush it through now and he said that 1,000 years after he got released, he raged. He ran around the whole earth, Agog and, and, and Magog, the two cities, and gathered the demonic forces, people that will fight with him, confused so many people, those that he had deceived in the world, all these naked women that, that are going about causing havoc everywhere in the church, all the people that are behaving anyhow, sleeping around anyhow, acting anyhow, they are part of people that he will deceive and draw in his camp. And the Bible recorded in Revelation here, to verse chapter 20, that they are in multitude, they are on Countable. The army of the Satan was uncountable. They are so big. And do you know what they did? They came to attack the children of God in that beautiful city. That beautiful city is called New Jerusalem. And New Jerusalem is not a city where they be like with the sister. And say, no, no, no. It's a, a city that is already built in heaven. And heaven will just drop it down. It's called New Jerusalem. And that place, only those that have not, according to the Bible that we just read here, only those that have not bowed to beasts, that have not taken the mark of beast, that have not followed the Obama camp and destroyed the Bibles and causing churches in America to die. Those that have not persecuted Jesus Christ, those that have not done a done things that, 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 that will make God grieved. They are the people that are going to be there. And those that are dead, that are walking in the path of God, the apostles, those that are beheaded. The Bible says here, I think it was verse 7 of it, or one, I can't remember the Bible, but anyway, chapter 20, so I'm telling here now. He says that those that are going to be there are the apostles apostles, the evangelists, and so on, the people that preach the gospel, and people that have died in the, in the war front, those that are beheaded, they will be resurrected, and they will be in that place. We that are living now, if we are living right like the apostles, so willing to die like apostles, we also will be adopted into the new Jerusalem. And those that are, going to, that are not going to make it, they will remain in the grave where they are. In that thousand years, they will remain there. Until after then, 
when devil has come up with that battle to come and fight in New Jerusalem, the Bible recorded here in that same day, Revelation chapter 20, he says that the heavenly and the host of heaven, they, they revoked. God Almighty released fire. The fire burned the whole army of Satan, finished them completely. That means, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. God was the one that fights. We did not raise the battle. We did not raise a weapon. We did not raise any arms. We did not build any choir to sing in the war front. We did not have any weapon to come to go to the war. We are all enjoying our thousand years with Christ where we reign like kings and priests. I don't know if you understand me. And God was the one that fight the battle for us. He sent down the fire and burned the chaff of the enemy. Burned Satan and his people. And then that very demon, that very animal called Satan, he was bound with the other Jezebelian spirits and so on and they were cast in the lake of fire then the second death he said that one we are not going to be part of it those that partake in the 1,000 years of reign in the kingdom of God, the, the, the New Jerusalem, we are not going to be part of the second death. Please, I'm just brushing this into. I want you to read that Revelation chapter 20 because I believe in Bible more than anything. I don't believe in myself or what I speak. I believe in what Bible is saying. Read Revelation chapter 20 to grasp completely because I know most of you have missed this program, but you will go back and listen to it later so you can understand what I'm saying. Yeah? We are all going to reign together. The second death we will not be part of it. Which one is second death? The first one is this one that we die now, and then when the thousand years of reigning comes, we will resurrect. Those that are okay, we resurrect. Those that work with God, yeah, we will resurrect and then we live with Christ in that thousand years in the New Jerusalem, right? And then the second death is the one that when that Satan is cast in hellfire, after the fire come and burn down his agents and everything around that came to attack us in New Jerusalem, that came to attack us in New Jerusalem, when fire burned them, they will gather them all and then in the lake, lake of fire with their master, therefore. Yeah, we are master devil. And when they are in there, then there will be a judgment for those that are dead and those that are living, all the rest now. We have already clear our own is clear. We are going to heaven settled. But then those that are inside the grave and the other one that are still on the earth living their life with the tribulation that they are going to face. Yeah, those ones are going to now resurrect it to go and throw into their lake of fire because there will be a great judgment. They will just come out and then they hear the judgment, get thee behind yoke of iniquity, then straight to lake fire. That's their second death. That one is eternal death. But that one, you and I are not going to partake in it. Only the first death that we might we might partake in. That means when I say might, I mean if we don't rapture with him, because it's coming very soon. If we don't rapture with him, we might then partake in the second death. Don't miss the rapture. because, In fact, it's not even might. If you miss the rapture, you are partaking in the second death because it's going to be difficult for you to depend to, during that time of tribulation. The pain you will go through in that tribulation might not. In fact, it will be difficult for you to, to talk about Jesus then. They will so persecute you that you say, what the hell? Let me join them. You will join them. Today's thing, the Bible says that they shut in. Jesus Christ and God come in agreement to shut in the, day, the days of the, of, the, of the persecution so that people will be able to at least get one or two that will repent. Because if it lasts as it's supposed to last, everybody will go to hell and remain. I have so many things to tell you, but I can't go on because I don't, I don't play with my opening prayers. I don't play with my worship and praise. These are very important. If you are going to church this morning, please hurry up, do that. Make sure you meet up your opening, opening prayer. And please, I'm begging you, every one of you that's saying that I don't like to go to church again. You have money, 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 money. No, don't let devil deceive you. Why devil is bringing that into you? Don't go to church because they are talking about money. It's because he wants to keep you in a place where he will destroy you and he will bind you together with him in the hellfire. Please don't listen. If they are talking about money, if you want to listen, you listen. If you don't want to listen, fine. But hear the message. And if you feel that the place is uncomfortable, don't stay home. What you need to do is to go to church. Just find any Bible believing church. By the time you, you, you navigate from one to other, one to other, before you know it, you find a Bible believing church. If you have none, please come to my church. Come to Dominion City. I worship in headquarters, Aja. We know what we are doing. We are not perfect, but we know what we are doing. I'm telling you, I wouldn't even be there if I don't know. In fact, I'm giving you a personal invitation. Our service starts by 9 o'clock. But if you if you come 8.30, you meet our opening prayer and everything. So please endeavor to rush out 8.30, be there. Okay? 
I will be so glad to have you. Just call me on the phone. Say, Evangelist, I'm the one that saw you on the message. I'll be glad to hug you and welcome you in that our midst because that's the gathering of the saints. I don't usually broadcast church, but Dominion City, I vow to broadcast from what I'm seeing until if, any, if there's anything I see tomorrow that I that cannot take you to heaven, I will let you know. But for now, that's the church that will take you to heaven. That I know. If you don't have, if you don't have to come to my branch, go to any branch and then call me the next. Call me and tell me what you see. Go to, we have branches in New York, we have in America, everywhere, Britain, wherever. Just look for Dominion City wherever you are. I don't have the address of her. Look for it and then just go and attend and then tell me what you see when you call me next time. May God bless you because see, I'm gonna leave you now. Let me go and take my bath. I've not brushed my teeth, nothing. So I need to hurry up now and get myself ready for the service so I don't go late. Okay. I love you so much and I thank God that every one of you partake in this. Those that partake in this message if you can only just share it you get even more blessings eh? because so many souls will see the truth that they are avoiding to hear that truth is very important that people hear it you are in minnesota i don't know if we have a branch in minnesota but please ask them trying to google and find out if we don't we will soon get a branch in minnesota i'm sure we will because uh, we need to grow. We need to expand more and more. We need Church of Heaven. We need Church of Philadelphia. A church without blemish. We need Church of God to be expanded. Enough of this building people are calling church. Please, find a Bible-believing church and go there. Don't go to a church where they sit after two minutes, they go and drink coffee. Please, I'm not encouraging you for that. One minute outside the coffee. Just come back again. Few, few minutes, they take a break. Church, no. When Holy Spirit wants to pray, they say coffee time. Holy Spirit will go back. Don't, don't. In fact, I'm, I don't want to say it. I know that some churches in Europe and America can do that, maybe not in Africa. We don't have coffee time in our churches in Africa, except South Africa might adopt that because South Africa has become a city of abomination. They have adopted every evil they see in the Western world. They've adopted almost everything. Yeah, so I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to leave you now because the network will start messing up again. God bless you and have a very wonderful Sunday. I wish you best of it. I mean, your Sunday shall be uh, outstanding. This particular Sunday will be outstanding. Because of the message you have heard, the network is quite bad. Because of the message you have heard, Heavenly Father is going to release unction to function this week upon you. You are not going to make mistakes. You are not going to follow the West.